Once the injury happened, first thing that comes to my mind, you know, me being the wannabe future GM, I'm like, dang it, my knee's done. Was this my last game as a Raven? And it's intercepted by Marlon Humphrey. Marlon Humphrey is without a doubt in the conversation to be the best corner in football. <laughs> Tony, what's up, man? Good to have you here. Thank you for coming in to Studio 44. It's good to have you. How you doing? I'm doing good, bro. Had a great days of work, got better, so. Great days of work, got better. Um, we were just talking. Mm -hmm. The number 44. Yeah. You, along with Brandon Carr, a lot of other guys, were not against the number 44. What, what was your initial reaction when I told you guys I was going to be wearing 44? Wasn't surprised when you said Yes. You would be 44 because that is like a Marlin. It's wild. It's wild. Yeah, it's like a sure. Marlin type Definitely deal. Wild. But um, it's grown on me a little bit. You know I what I mean? You know what I, mean? I, was, I, I wasn't really expecting, you know, greatness out of the 44, but it came, bro. Yeah, I, I uh, it was definitely wild. It was definitely wild. But um, it actually, I really thought about 44 when I first signed. Now, that probably would have been a mistake. Just that was just would have been too soon to do that. But <laughs> speaking of numbers, what's up with your number? 23, Any, mean anything to you? 23? Uh, no, nah, not really. I really want number one, but I know that's probably not an obtainable number. Is I mean, no one. Have I ever, has anyone ever wore number one here? I mean, it's never been allowed. And maybe I, it's. Yeah, you, you think I'm going to be the first one? I wouldn't even go ask, so. Uh, you know, you're. Ah. <laughs> I was straight. I'm, I'm good with 23. 23 is a good number. I mean, I wore 22 when I was in Arizona. Yep. And obviously when I got here, Jimmy had deuce deuce. Okay, so I about that. 23, you know, pretty fire. So just key. number nothing to you. Okay, draft just happened. Mm -hmm. I was obviously the first rounder. Yeah, <laughs> I know, bro. Talk, yeah. talk to me about, you know, it doesn't really matter where you start, obviously. You know, you were able to, year 10, year 10. Basically. But tell me about, your draft experience. I think, you know, we always see the lollipops and the rainbows and yeah. the first rounders with the parents and then the message. Tell me about your experience with, you know, day one, two, day and one. three going by. Yeah, so Come coming out, I came out early and then I obviously had a high draft grade when I um, met with Coach Stoops and um, everything was looking good as far as like me getting drafted. So my my training, I don't know if I necessarily <clears throat> took training as serious as I could have because we were, I was like 20 years old and we were training in- um, Where'd you train at? Hollywood, in LA. Yeah, so me Jeez. me being a Cali kid, you know, I've always wanted to experience that LA life. And, you know, I was in Hollywood and I was young. I was around a bunch of other guys who were going in the first round. Mm -hmm. And me mentally, I'm like, I'm like, I'm right here with y'all, but I'm finna get drafted high like y'all, but, um, you know, I didn't run. I didn't run well, and I'm assuming that's why I didn't get drafted. I still don't know, like the real, direct reason of why I didn't get drafted. But I mean, my stats and everything in college kind of back me up um, as far as me thinking why I should be getting drafted. But long story short, um, luckily I didn't have a draft party. <laughs> I had yeah, just man. family over, yeah, and uh, my yeah. agent was telling me at the time, you know. Probably won't be first day draft guy, but second day for sure. Uh, so first day goes by, um, and the last pick of the first round was Matt Elam, and he uh, he came here. Yeah. And I, I remember um, during the combine, I had a really good meeting with the Ravens. You know, I, I felt like you that know was, we can. Was, I felt like we connected. One. So that like when well, they came up first Dang. round, thirty second pick, I'm like, hey pops, hold on, we like, we might, but no, nah, didn't happen. <laughs> the next day. I'm like, all right, let's go get some hats from Walmart, you know. Oh, so you, okay. That was, probably that was your day. day. That was your day. You know, um, nada, no, nada. No, no. So, but you knew I, day three. Oh, yeah, no, day three, like, I woke up like, <clears throat> feeling good. Probably a Packer, probably, okay. Raider. Nah, then we get to the seventh round. Were you, um, watch, were you watching the draft? The oh, I'm watching the entire thing. Oh, you was like legit locked in. Oh, yeah, I was locked in. So I'm watching all these safeties go up. I'm like, who? Then it, st it started getting to the sixth and seventh round. And that's when the fullbacks start going. Rex Ryan. Punters. Oh, yeah, Rex Ryan. A long snapper every once in a while. Rex Ryan called me in the seventh round. He was with the Jets. 
Um, and he's like, man, we're trying to, I'm trying to convince the GM to, to, uh, to draft you right now in the seventh round. And then they end up taking a fullback. Um, so I, I was crushed. I was hurt. But, um, I mean, at that point, I told my agent, I'm like, look, I don't even care, like, where we sign. Like, because all these teams are calling, like, we want you as a priority free agent, blah, blah, blah. And I, I told my agent straight up, I'm like, I don't even care. Like, I was hot at this point. So I was like, just pick for me. Like, what's... Pick for, oh, so you didn't even, you didn't even care at all. Nah. My, my mind was so already mind messed was up. Made up. Yeah, I was like... Um, wherever I'm going to go, I'm going to just dog, be a dog and dog it out. So we ended up picking the Cardinals and, um, you know, looking at the situation. You always want to look at the depth chart, who they got. And um, he felt like it was the best spot for me. And um, ended up going there, rookie, rookie mini camp. I mean, out of the gate. Uh, I was just picking, I was getting interceptions like crazy. Um, and then... That second preseason game, they put me in there and I had two picks. And then from there, I just kind of, I felt comfortable and I made the team, so. Ty Matthew and Pat P were there too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they were all so there. So I had, I had some good leadership um, and some good guys to like feed off of while I'm playing and to watch, so. So what, so you, you immediately came in and started making plays. Did you ever feel like there was a time when it was like, knowing you're the undrafted guy in the room, it was a little bit tighter on what you could mess up on. And like oh, yeah, 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 for sure. They used to call me Bobcat because there was this one play called Bobcat that I, it's three receiver hook. And like, I had no idea what that meant. <laughs> and like, it was at a point, Coach Bowles, Todd Bowles was the head coach now for the Buccaneers. He would, uh, right, nice. <laughs> he would call Bobcat purposely when I would be in there. That was the name of the play. And I would mess it up like every time. So. But you was, you know, but everything else, cover three, cover one, I, I was doing it right. Obviously, um, and um, it was crazy, bro. Looking back, that was so long ago, but yeah. if those situations, I feel like, didn't occur, I don't know where I'd be yeah. um, as a man, like, mentally. So it, it helped me out. So then you come to the Ravens. Mm -hmm. um, what, our second year, we have a number one defense. Yeah, 2018. What, what would you say, like, when I look back on that year, I was like, that was a fun year. Oh yeah. What, what do you think were the traits that made that defense like, just above others? And we were just—I mean, it seemed like we were getting turnovers every week, all over the place. I mean, that game with the Titans, we had like nine or ten sacks. I think it was like eleven. What What do you think made that defense? Because that was was that the only that's the only number one defense you've been on, right? Yeah. yeah so what what made that defense kind of head and shoulders above the rest of the league? Uh, I think just. Like, we had real friendships, and, like, yeah. we were yeah. really hanging out 24-7. We were actually, you know, everybody wanted to be around each other. And, like, you don't see it when you're hanging out, but when we get back on the field, like, everything was just, like, yeah. clicking, you know what I mean? So that was a really fun year. I think um, we're, we're, we're starting to get back to that a little bit just with everyone, you know, once every everything forms again. But, um, I mean, that was one of the – probably my better years, you know, in the, in the league, you know, just being able to be around all you guys, Weddle, um, you know, and just, we're just having fun. I think that's the number one thing, just having fun. Yeah, I, I agree. I think uh, it's when everybody was, we were at your house watching those. Yeah, those, we were going to the final, finals, everybody finals was coming game. over to the house, yeah, you know, that was we were watching the finals game and had yeah. Joe Flacco over there, like the whole team was yeah, just the whole like, team you know was, what yeah. I mean? So. I was, no, that was, the year before that, that's when I was on rookie dude to getting the pizzas. I was yeah, like, and the wings. And the wings, I'm like, Messing dang. up on the orders. Y'all was, anyway. Anyway. <laughs> um, um, all right, so then going into the next year, you got to get a little trouble. ACL. Mm -hmm. I'm dealing, you know, it's, it's weird. I had never been an injured guy. Yeah. And so get hurt last year, and it's, it's weird watching your guys play oh, ball yeah, yeah, and you yeah. can't play. Oh, it's the worst. So tell me. It's just a weird feeling, but I know that happened with you. I remember you got the game ball uh, against the Steelers uh, in the locker room. Yeah. I What's going through your mind when all that when all that was a that was a muggy day? What's going through your mind when all that happened? How are you how are you thinking about that? Um, I, I still remember that whole that week was just weird. I had hurt yeah. myself in the weight room by lifting. I was doing a a clean, and I I get jacked up so much on the C four and the pre workouts. I was just. <laughs> 
So I lift the bar up and I actually hit the bar in my head, started bleeding, had to get stitches before the game. Yeah. So um, I went out there and, you know, I just, I don't know if that week was, it was just an off week for off me. Week for you. Yep. You know what I mean? I didn't feel right, but went out there. I, I think I was playing well uh, uh, before the injury happened. But once the injury happened, first thing that comes to my mind, you know, me being the wannabe future GM, I'm like, dang it, my guaranteed money's up, my knee's done. Was this my last game as a Raven? Um, so that, that's kind of where my mindset was. I mean, I wasn't really too worried about the injury. I'm like, I, I know I could recover no, you could, from it. No, you, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and then the worst part was really just the recovery from it. I thought I would be able to recover from my knee injury a lot faster than I faster. did, but um, it was just a complicated injury. Yeah. Um, and uh, the worst part really, honestly, was when I was, I was hurt, I got out, and you guys like won every single game after that. Oh, now you talk man. about you talk about hurt watching, like that was hurt. I was hurt watching that. You know what I mean? Because yeah. we we didn't really start off that well. Yeah, we we lost. We, we started were two and two. Yeah, we, we won two, two lost two. two. Yeah, we well we started off right well with the Dolphins, then um, we played the Cardinals, yep. then Browns, got, and then got Chiefs. By the Browns. Then we went to the Steelers, so. It was we, like a winter break. We, yeah, we so like, get we, no, I don't think anybody defensively was playing like well. And yeah. then, because I remember how bad that Browns game were, was. Yeah, I mean, was, you you had like made a couple errors and then it looked like it was on me. <laughs> so everybody, they had made like a whole little. <laughs> I tried to pick you, but. Nah, that's all good. I tried to pick you as a blank. Yeah, I nah, said, but, I'm going to let them have it. it. <laughs> I'm going to have it. Nah, but uh, that was tough. But I, like I said, I think that type of stuff, like, built my character, built me mentally, you know, prepped me for like the worst things that could possibly come. You spoke on when you got hurt, you were thinking GM cap, GM mm-hmm. cap. What's next for Tony Jefferson after football? Whenever you decide to, to hang up the cleats, is that, is that what ne- what's next? I mean, I would always love to become a GM, but I know the how hard it is yeah. to, to get in that position. And I know it takes a lot of hard work too. Um, but I do want to get into coaching and then obviously you know, the scouting and stuff is something that I really, I really like doing. Um, I see, I see myself even scouting, even like when I'm coaching my son's team, I'm like, hmm, <laughs> kid's kind of, he's got a nice little bill. He probably can, you know I mean? I got. Do you, do you still, I know you used to do mock drafts. Do you still do the mock drafts? Yeah, I, I, I'd be doing the mock drafts on my own. I don't really put it out there no like more because to. Uh, it doesn't look too good when you're wrong all of <laughs> So I try to keep it to myself. So uh, two, was it last week? Last week you were, I, I hit you up, thought you were in town. Then you were mm-hmm. like, I had to get back mm-hmm. and see my son play because he got his first pick. Being a 10-year vet, mm-hmm. had you know made this your livelihood, how was it seeing your kid? I know it's, I know it's early, but how was it seeing your kid kind of follow in those footsteps or playing football? And like, how was that seeing that as a father? Um, it's pretty surreal, honestly. And then last week when I went home, he had his best game that he's had, like, this whole seven year and you're, life you're the coach, right? Yeah, I'm helping out with those guys and also with uh with baseball. He he had his best day in baseball, baseball too. So I was able to watch him go out there and really compete and uh that was a, that was fulfilling for me as a father. But more so as a coach, you get to see like the younger guy like like I was telling my wife, it's like I love when the good the good players do well, but when the players who aren't as good or haven't had as much experience and they do well, it's more fulfilling for me. So like yeah. our, our lower graded players, I feel like when they do something better, I'll get a little more excited when they do <laughs> it. So um, like I said, coaching's fun. Um, it's something that, you know, I probably would look into doing. I know Weddle, he's gonna be head coach for his high school um, next year. And he did tell me he's gonna save a spot for me for the staff. So I will be looking forward to that as well once I'm done. So, I mean, I, I coached, uh, I haven't coached ball yet, but coaching track, it's, uh, it's definitely a challenge. I've never coached little kids, but I mean, I've coached bigger kids, but yeah. what is, what would you say is the, the hardest part about, I mean, because kids, they, they don't really listen too much, obviously, but what, uh, what is probably the hardest part with trying to have the patience and the connect with um, those kids? Bro, I've learned to have so much patience with, because yeah. these kids are seven and eight years old. And then practice when they 
when they get to practice, they're literally like just getting off the bus from school. So like their brains are like, eh, yeah, eh. so like <laughs> trying to get them to focus is like one of the toughest parts. So you try to make like drills and stuff like more fun so they can focus in. Like we do shark and, sharks and minnows. Like we have some guys be the guys who get the flag and everyone runs and you try to get them. So little games like that. But I think mostly just the focus really is like the toughest part, like at that age group. But like I said, it's just fulfilling when you see them actually focus in and lock in and then take it to the do game and they do that. Yeah. That is a uh, that's pretty, pretty good. Feeling. Yeah, that's that's good. Feeling. Recently, well, not really too recent, just had two daughters. Mm hmm. How is the, I know you had, I know you had your son for a while. Yeah. How's it bringing in, not one, but two daughters into the world? Yeah, so basically you just think at it like this. You get two infants at the same time and they're fraternal, so they're not identical. So they're two different oh, kids. I didn't even know that. You know actually. what I mean? So you're just having two, you're having two kids at once. Um, and it's great. I mean, I love, I love my daughters to death. It's a lot of screaming and crying. Um, you yeah. know, their mother spoils them a lot. I do too. And everyone else, you know, you, it's hard not to, so. How old are they right now? They're two. They just turned two in February, so. It's definitely um, a challenge there with patience as well, you know, especially with my son, who doesn't, he likes to mess with them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So <laughs> I look over and I'm like, bro, you cannot be DDTing your sister right there. You can't do wrestling moves on your sister, like, relax. <laughs> But um, it's, it's great. You know, we went from a, a party of three to party of five. And uh, I don't know if we'll be adding to that. But right now, we are, okay. we are, per we are perfectly content with the, okay. with the five we have now. And um, my two girls, man, Jayla and Alea, they, they brought me, shh, when I was down, I mean, when I wasn't playing, I was rehabbing. Like, yeah. we had to go through COVID and all that. We are stuck in the house. So I was able to be a dad like 24 7 not leaving and going there because we were in the house and you know that just brought me closer to the family and everything being and all that so it's been a cool experience man i'm I'm happy god's blessed me with that Amen. um and just i'm just going to continue to thrive so you're um you spoke on when you're rehabbing you get hurt rehab kind of you kind of take a year off yeah that year when you were trying to get back into things how was end up going to 49ers for a little bit how was it when you were kind of you know, on that 49ers, you know, peace squad, knowing you could really get, like, how, how was it to reinsert yourself basically back oh, to the bro. league? I know it's hard once you get out. So how was, how was that kind of new bro, obstacle? Bro, that was honestly, when I got to San Francisco and happened, having been, being here in Baltimore and just the locker room, knowing everybody, and then going into a new setting where it's like, okay, everybody's like, okay, well, we, we know who this guy is, but he didn't play last year. Is he washed? Is he like the washed up guy? Or like what? Like who, who, who is, is it? He? So like, mostly everybody they're like, oh yeah, like what? But like, you have to literally like look at it as you're starting over. It's like I really like when I was in San Francisco, I felt like I was an undrafted free agent again. It felt like, Sheesh. oh yeah, no, and I was treated that way too. Trust me, Ooh. like <laughs> I was, I was out there. I mean. Third, fourth string safety. Um, I mean, running routes on scout team. Like I, I really was starting over, and it was like on me, it was tough mentally because it's like, bro, I'm really starting over. Like, after I really feel like that. Years. Yeah, after putting it all that, I'm like, man, it's like that's how the league really is. So I really, I really got a good uh, look at like how the league works. It's, it's definitely a what have you done for me lately type of league. Yeah, and. Um, you know, I was like, man, all that work I done put in for all these seven, eight years, like, just get washed away. And yeah, it does. It does. And so, like, I'm on, I'm on practice squad, bro, and I'm like, like, bro, I, I, I feel like I can play. Um, I had the opportunity to play in one game. Uh, they played the Rams on Monday night, and we, I had a good, very good week of practice picking the ball off, and I thought I was going to get a lot of action. Ended up only getting two plays in. Um, you know, that kind of upset me a little bit. And then um, my final week there in um, San Francisco, I actually had my best practice. They gave me like scout team player of the week, which I really didn't care for. Like, and then um, got released. 
I'm like, Eric, like, hit up the cast, <laughs> like, bro, like, come <laughs> get me, bro. Like, you guys are, you guys got injuries, everything. So, ended up bringing me in for a workout. Um, I was, <laughs> Chris Hewitt, he good looking out. He was looking out for me because I, I, I went to the workout like, like <laughs> he's like, bro, like, slow chill, down, chill. like, relax, bro. You gonna follow your face? Um, but I ended, <laughs> I ended up having a good, good workout. Um, my first week back. Uh, actually, my first day at practice, Chuck had got like COVID, so they're like, "Hey, you're up!" So I finally yeah. get my opportunity to play, uh, go out there play. Um, I, I think I did solid. Then the next game, we played Cincinnati, um, and then I ended up starting in the second half. Um, thought I played pretty solid. Um, then you know, just got got in there, got to get some plays in. I think I made a couple plays here and there. Um, you know which I felt like was good after taking a week, a year off. So um, it was good, man. I, I was happy I got to get out there and show that I could still play. I feel like the league was trying to push me out. And I, I, I feel like I still have a lot in the tank. I think taking the year off actually helped me prolong my career um, in many ways. So uh, I'm just glad that I have another opportunity to go out there and show that I still have some juice. The old man got some juice and uh, see where it goes. And you're you're 30 now. Yeah, I turned 30 in January, um, and you know you it's know what scary. they say you know scary number. Hey, you know what they say yeah, when you turn 30, everything's downhill from there. But I think they lied because I'm feeling good, feeling up, um, I'm moving great. So I'm gonna just let uh, my play do the talking from now on. So you've been to, I mean, you've been to two other places, and and we're kind of gonna see like. A lot of times when people come in from different places, they're like, man, it's not like this everywhere. Yeah, that, yeah. That's, that's what I hear. Like, and I, I heard you say that before. What? I've only been here, so I really, I really can't speak on anywhere else. I know I like it here. But what, what do you think is one or two things that make the Ravens kind of different than a lot of organizations? Um, I, bro, honestly, when I, get, when I got here, like, and it was so easy for me to, like, transition, like, from Arizona to here, um, I just felt like it was just family oriented. Like I felt like everybody was real that like works in the building. Like you didn't really have to, like they weren't gonna BS you um, in any way, which is kind of how I work. I don't, I don't, I don't like gray area cause I, that makes me feel uncomfortable. Yeah. So like, if you could shoot it to me straight. It's way better. Yeah, it's way better. <laughs> cause I'm gonna shoot it, I'm gonna shoot it to you straight. So if you give it to me straight, I'm gonna give it to you straight. And that's how I feel like has, has been like the the main reason on why people love it here and they allow you to be yourself like you're not you're not going to get judged off of your personality and i love when when harb says like before a game let your personality shine like be who you are when you're out there on the field as well so you know nobody's like judging you like this isn't a judge judgmental organization like on your personality like you're getting judged for your your film your your play on the field but like off the field i don't like Studio 44, like you are who you are. They're allowing you to do that and they're letting you showcase that. So this is why I feel like when players come here, like they feel like an ounce of freedom. Yeah. Just go let me be me. Um, whatever I do on the field, like you guys decide that. Yeah, you guys, decide. you know what I mean? But I mean, I think that's huge. I think it's huge. So last, last, couple, last couple questions. I just recently saw some film of you which I've seen before, of you carrying the rock back mm-hmm. in the day, back oh, in yeah. high school. I'm really like that. Tell it first, first off, what, before we talk about good you were, mm-hmm. why did you end up going to safety as opposed to staying a running back? Uh, Got to ask Kel Gundy that, the running backs coach for Oklahoma. I mean. Uh, oh, you went to Oklahoma as a running back? Well, as an athlete. I mean. An athlete. They were, when, I, when I was getting recruited, um, especially by USC, Pete Carroll and, um, and uh, Morton. They, they were recruiting me out of USC, and I was still kind of going back and forth what I wanted to play. And um, they told me they were going to try me at both uh, once I got there or whatever I wanted to do. And then um, when I got to Oklahoma, um, I think their plan was more for me on defense. And then I'll, I literally almost transferred, like, Three or four weeks into being in Oklahoma, just because. But you wanted to be running back that bad. I think more was a culture shock for me once I got to Oklahoma, and then like I was like, yeah, I kind of want to play running back, but I ended up staying, worked out. But I still think 
to this day, I could play running back in the league. In the, in the NFL? You, in the NFL, and, I mean, and we, look, we didn't even have many. All our running backs were hurt last year. You could have just did you ask? Did you ask that question? Yes, or? I did. I actually did tell G. Rowe when he needed me to. Hey, if you need a running back, let me know. So okay, he declined. So obviously, G. Rowe don't, <laughs> G. Rowe don't think I, I, I'm like that. But hey, so G. Rowe don't have faith in you. No, nah, he don't. But have a faith. lot of guys they had faith in you before. It might be. That's what I'm saying. It might be time to take it upstairs. Go. I know, nah, but it's cool. When I'm done with the NFL, I'll probably go to USF, USFL. Play running back. I wanted to speak on that too. So, <laughs> so the U.S. I think it's U.S. Is it U.S. That's in Birmingham. Oh, it that's, is. That's in. That's oh, yeah. in my. So I'm gonna just stay at your. That's, that's in my. Yeah, you know, what I'm saying, saying my mom, mom in the crib. Um, we can make that happen. But what? <laughs> speaking going back to, to high school. So you were you were getting. You're at Westlake. Eastlake. Eastlake. And you were getting recruited as a runner. What what were your other? What what led you to choose Oklahoma as opposed to anywhere else? It was just a lot of stuff going on, like, during my recruiting process, like, oh, shoot. Um, when I was getting recruited uh, my last year, Urban Meyer ended up being sick. Um, I'm, I'm not sure how what really went on with that, but he got sick, so he left Florida. Um, while I'm at the Army All-American game, they came down with the sanctions um, for USC with oh, Pete Carroll. Oh, yep, yep. So I, at this point, I'm like, I just want to go somewhere where there's a stable coaching staff. And Bob, he wasn't going anywhere from what I could see. And I, I felt like Oklahoma was a big time program. And, um, you know, I just felt comfortable doing that. And we had two other guys from San Diego that went there as well. So when we went there, we were called the Cali Trio. And uh, the Cali Trio. Yeah, yeah. If we if, if the NIL deals were, were going on. Oh, man. We, I, I might not have had to ask people for, for money to eat while I was in college. I got a few more questions for you. Go ahead. Um, rapid fire questions. Dogs or cats? Dogs, bro. You got, you got, bro, you got to stop with the Bro, money. the cats fire. Bro, bro, the cats literally don't do nothing. Bro. bro, my cat is different, though. He's a dog? My cat is very personality. For real? I'm really about to start walking around Baltimore with my cat. Like, when I'm just outside, just walking, living down there, I'm about to just be walking around like, my cat. Do they run away from, like... Everyone they see, or like or every like every time I feel spooked. like every time I see a cat, bro, they're like looking like. No, my cat will run right up on you. And be like, "What's up?" Okay. Just jump in your lap. I mean, it's it's bro, really. I, I promise you, like I'm not scared of cats, but like they they kind of like freak me out a little I, bit. I actually used to. I think it's. I used. I didn't used to be scared, but. You just never know what a. It's cat something is about thinking, cats bro. that, like, as a child, I didn't. I don't know. What is the worst sound in the world? The worst sound? Yeah. What's the worst sound that you just hate to hear? An alarm clock. Mm. You're an early morning guy, though. Yeah, but I hate hearing it. Breakfast food or dinner food? Dinner. I hardly eat breakfast. Breakfast bro. is weak. I especially like, I before a workout. It. Yeah. Like, breakfast nah. is weak. Yeah, yeah. I'd rather have a smoothie. What's your favorite song? Favorite song? Right What's your down. song that gets you going before a game? What song do you need to hear every time before a game? Before a game? I, 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 I got, I got I'm a little shuffle. I be having a little shuffle going on. I'm not musically motivated. But most of the time, I got to listen to Mozzie, some type of Mozzie. See, I don't like, even know who Mozzie is. See, yeah. But you're from Bama, so it's cool. What does that mean? He's from Cali. Oh, he's from Cali. Yeah. I don't know who's from Bama, who rap's from Bama. I think Gucci is from Bama. Bessmer. He don't rep that. Yeah, he don't. He rep the A. He yeah. rep the A. <laughs> I'm about both of you got to play. Both of you got to play. All right. Last two. What's the best age to be? The you best can be age any to age be? for just ever. Bro, I ain't gonna lie. I mean, you're only 30, so you ain't really been living too long, but. Well, honestly, 23. 23. And that's why you're I just, 23. I just loved being 23. I don't know why. Because you're like. I got to think about that. You're at that saying. age where you're just like, this is like the prime. Like 23 is like prime, I feel like. All right, last question. If you could look back on your life, mm -hmm. we've all made mistakes, we've all made things we've done that we wish you did, we've all made some mistakes that ended up working out well. What would you tell a, a young 18-year-old Tony Jefferson? What would, you, what, would, what, would, what would be one thing you would tell him? I would tell 18-year-old me, don't leave high school early. I left high school early. You left high school early? I left high school early, and I, I wasn't, that's why I, it was hard for me. How to did like, you leave high school early? Oh, you, I did the little classes. And oh, I, you went to the spring. I, so I, I went in the spring. Oh. And like when I when I when I tell you like I used to be on Facebook, bro. 
And I used to see all my friends like getting ready for like going Bro. to parties and but and I'm in Oklahoma like going to workouts at five AM. Yeah. Yeah, I I, I, like, I was never that doing that, that I was that semester that. that I missed, I always wish that I could get that little semester back. I mean I did go back for prom, which was cool, but like Bro, I, I did. I felt like I did miss a lot of my senior year by doing that. And key stuff. Never get I mean, high school. I love. I loved high school. Yeah, I, I ain't gonna lie. High school was fun. And then like my last year in high school before I left early, like most of it was me just doing work because like I was trying to hurry up and finish. Hurry and finish. So like, I don't think I really enjoyed my last year of high school. Well, Tony, I hope you uh, get your running back dreams. Maybe, maybe I, even on I the squad. Am, but if not, USFL. Set that up. <laughs> Thank you for Alabama your time. Alabama Stallions. Yeah. My man. Huh. All right.